In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to prepare Azure to host the backend infrastructure for Azure FileSync. So I start off and I go into the Azure console. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and create a storage account. This storage account will store the special file share that Azure FileSync will back onto. So I specify my subscription and what I'm doing first is I'm creating a resource group. Now it's important to remember to keep all of your resources in the same location in a resource group. So I've called this Learn File Sync RG. I give the storage account a name. The storage account name must be unique. So in this one, I'm calling it Extend CAD Files. I'm going to leave it in the central US location. And that's important to remember because all of my resources for this is your file sync instance should be kept in the same location. So if you're doing this for yourself, remember to choose a location that makes sense for you. I click review and create. And after it's validated, my settings are correct. I can click create and create that storage account. The deployment's underway and then the deployment is complete. Once the deployment's complete, I can go to the resource. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a file share within that storage account. So I click File Shares. I click New File Share and I give the file share a name. I'm calling the file share CAD file share. And here I'm setting a quota of one gigabyte. Now you might choose to configure a much larger quota because most people have file shares larger than one gigabyte, but this is just a demonstration example of how to perform this task. I click create. It creates the file share. So I now have a file share that's sitting in a storage account. Now that I've got a file share sitting in a storage account, I'm going to create the Azure File Sync service. So I type as your file sync and I click create. I put it in the resource group that I already created, learn file sync RG. I provide a name for the storage sync service, CAD sync service, and I make sure that it's in the central US location. Remember, I want to keep it in the same location and in the same resource group as all of the other resources that are associated with this as your file sync deployment. I click review and create. And after it's validated, I click create. The deployment occurs and the deployment is successful. I can now go to the sync service. Once I have a sync service, I can create a sync group. A sync group is like one particular path that I want to replicate. So here I give the sync group a name, CAD files. I choose my storage account and then from the storage account, I choose the file share. Now you can have multiple file shares associated with the storage account. So you might have one storage account and many different file shares, each file share associated with a different sync group. I click create. It now creates the sync group. So I now have a sync group. The sync group is connected to an Azure file share and that file share resides within a storage account. My Azure deployment is now ready. In this demonstration, I'm going to install the Azure File Sync software on the server and then connect the server to the sync service that I created in the previous demonstration. So I open a new browser tab and I go to Microsoft's Download Center and I'm putting in a specific link here to download the Azure File Sync server agent. So I click download, and when I click download, it says which version of the agent do you want to deploy? In this case, my host server is running Windows Server 2019. So I choose the storage sync agent and I click next. It then downloads that MSI file from Microsoft's website to the local server. You only need to download this file once. So when you're installing it on multiple servers, you can just copy it to an easily accessible network chair. Once the file is downloaded, I open the file and that begins the setup process. 
I go through the wizard, I click next. I'm going to go with the default location. It will ask me, do I need any proxy to connect from this server out to the internet? In this case, I'm saying use my existing proxy settings. Those are the ones that are configured within the control panel. It asks me how I want to update this agent going forward. I say use Microsoft Update. And then also I get another option about whether or not I want to update or check for updates on a regular basis. And I've said automatically update when a new version becomes available through Windows Update and apply that update every Tuesday at 6 p.m. I click Install. I say yes to the UAC prompt and I finish the installation. I then get another UAC prompt. So this is allowing me to configure the agent that has just been installed. It checks to see whether or not the agent is up to date, because if I downloaded this a few weeks ago, it might be out of date. And it says, yes, this agent is up to date. So I click OK. The next thing it asks me to do is to sign into my Azure account or an Azure account that has permissions to that sync service that I created. So I click sign in. I put in my credentials. I put in my password, I click sign in. It will then detect which subscriptions this particular account has access to. So I choose my subscription. I choose the resource group that hosts the sync service. And then I choose the storage sync service. I click register. It now registers that server with the storage sync service that's running in Azure that I created earlier. I click close. So I come back to the Azure console and I am back in my sync group, the one I created in the last demo called CAD files. I click on CAD files. And what I can do now is I can add a server endpoint. Now, any server that has been added to this sync group can be added as an endpoint. So here I use the drop down. And it tells me that TWT Mel FS1 has been registered. And that was the server I just registered. So I select that server. The next thing it asks me is which path do I want to replicate for this sync group? I type in the path E column backslash CAD folder, which I had in the first demo. I click create. So what it's doing now is it's creating that endpoint. And while that's occurring, I can configure the properties of that endpoint. What I want to do is I want to make sure that cloud tiering is enabled. As you'll remember from taking this MSLN module, cloud tiering allows some files to be kept on prem and then placeholders for those files to actually be stored on prem that consume no space while the actual files are stored in the cloud. So I turn on cloud tiering. And then I configure the settings for cloud tiering. I configure two settings. The first is how much storage space do I want to keep free on the volume? In this case, I want to keep 20% free space on the volume. Once 80% of the volume is consumed, start tiering files. I can also specify that I want to tier files that are over a certain age automatically. So here I'm specifying that any file that hasn't been accessed for 30 days will automatically be tiered up to the Azure File Sync service. That means that a placeholder is placed on prem. When the file is first written to the file share, of course, the file is synced up to the file share running in the cloud. I click Save and it applies those settings. I click refresh, I see the status change from pending to a nice green checkbox, which means that that endpoint has now been enrolled and synchronization of those files has occurred. 